Imposter syndrome is a pretty common thing to encounter when you first enter the world of work. If you clicked on this video, then you know full well that it's all about self-doubt, that feeling of incompetence, the I shouldn't be here, or I bet there are thousands of other people that could do this job better than I can. I've certainly experienced this. And before I mislead you, I haven't overcome it yet either. In this video, it's gonna be a bit more of a chat between me and you. Uh, I'll share some of my experiences, some of the things I found helpful uh, in overcoming my doubt. And I just ultimately hope that you can come away feeling encouraged. So I've been in the working world for 18 months now, and I've experienced quite a strange relationship between my knowledge or the time of which I've been learning things and my confidence. When I first started, I was pretty confident. You know, I knew that I'd been hired for who I was, for the skills I had, and this probably lasted for a few months. But over time, as I got more and more into my work, my confidence levels actually started to drop. And just for the record, my work is as a project engineer in the food industry. I basically help design and build and install food factories. So this drop in confidence was partially down to the fact that I was given more responsibility. But what I've now realized is it's actually also to do with the learning curve. So I always saw the learning curve as quite a sort of linear relationship or at least a slightly curved relationship where you effectively start with little knowledge and then as you learn, you learn at the rate in which you put in the work. Now, the reality is that's actually not how things work. The learning curve is actually a lot more like this. I'll put it on, on the screen for you. As I went through my placement year and even now into my graduate role, I felt like I was losing confidence by the week and I was, I was generally starting to get quite concerned about you know, what was wrong with me. Was I just not cut out for this job? Was I not working hard enough? Now it turns out I'm probably around this region of this learning curve. And whenever I speak to other people about this kind of stuff, they always give me some really frustrating answer like, it just takes time. I don't know about you, but I'm quite impatient and I often want things immediately. If I don't have a skill, well, I'll go away, watch a 10 minute YouTube video and I'll have that skill. Or I don't have a piece of tech, well, I'll order it on Amazon and it will be on my doorstep the next day. I think that sometimes we see life and learning uh, a bit like this scene from The Matrix. Can you fly that thing? Not yet. Operator. Tank, I need a pilot program for a B-212 helicopter. Hurry. Let's go. There are times when I honestly think, oh, I lack confidence. Well, I'll do that training course on building confidence and then from that point onwards, I'll be confident. But even after that course, I come back to work I make mistakes, I fail quite a lot, and I lose any semblance of the confidence that I had. Does this sound familiar to you? Sadly, at this point, we often start to beat ourselves up. You know, we make a mistake and we say, oh, I'm rubbish at this. What am I even doing here? I give up. If this is you, and I bet that this is 99% of graduates, then please don't be so harsh on yourself. Let's not beat ourselves up. We're probably all about here on the curve, and we've, we've put in a fair bit of work, but our confidence levels are probably fairly low, and they might even drop a little bit further. They're going to be hiccups along the way. But as we keep putting in the time, and I'm, I know I'm sorry, we've got to put in the time, we'll start to build that confidence up again and that resilience. And for the record, I'm totally guilty of getting to the end of a long, hard day and questioning my entire ability and my work. But what I have found helpful to deal with this is talking to other people, particularly talking to new grads who go through the same stuff that, that you do. But also I'd suggest talking to some of the more senior people within your company because they've often gone through the stuff you've already gone through and come out the other end. I know I've certainly done this and it's really encouraged me when I've had those conversations. Secondly, I would suggest maybe actually having some positive affirmations written down, such as my company hired me specifically over other people because of my abilities and the fact that they trust me to do the job well. You need to come up with your own, but having a few can be quite helpful. Maybe even put them on a post-it note and stick them to your monitor or your laptop. And finally, it could even be worth doing a little bit of deeper work and actually trying to figure out what are the limiting beliefs that you are currently believing. For me, it can often be around what other people think of me and like where my value is actually. For other people, it might be about perfectionism and making tiny little mistakes and it blowing up and feeling like it's the end of the world. So discovering what these limiting beliefs are can be really helpful and, and good ways of doing that obviously are talking to people, but you could also try things like journaling. I personally like to journal and pray and talk to people. I mean, ultimately, you need to remind yourself that it's okay to be an imposter. It's totally, totally normal. But please, whatever you do, don't allow yourself to stay as an imposter. Talk to other people about it. Remind yourself why you are good at this role and why you've been chosen for this role. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we need to just remind ourselves that it takes time. As we build up that knowledge, that confidence will go down a bit, 
but over time it should build up again. Please let me know in the comments if you found this helpful. I really hope you have and I hope it's encouraged you and made you feel a bit more normal if you're a graduate. If there are any other video ideas that you'd like me to do, particularly around this area of effective work and rest, please let me know. Um, I'm always interested to know what you kind of want to hear about and what I can make videos about uh, as I'm going to be taking this a little bit more seriously again over the next sort of year or so. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and as always I will see you in the next video.